right, Shalom Israel, this is Pastor Paul um, uh, with another um, Bible study uh, lesson um, concerning the book of Jeremiah. Uh, we are dealing with part seven. Um, and today we'll be reading uh, chapters 13 and 14, Jeremiah 13 and 14. And thus far, we um, we have seen um, since we started this Bible study, we've just we've seen how the Lord is just very disappointed in us, um, and and mainly those of us that are dealing with His Word. Uh, you know, we've seen that the Lord is saying. You know, our people, we like to, we like to um, play holy, but we don't actually want to be holy. Um, we like to uh, play concerning uh, doing the right thing, but a lot of our people don't actually like to do the right thing and live that way. Uh, and because of this, it's, it's going to bring our father in heavens um his his wrath on us you know his anger uh and the the punishment or the chastisement um that we're about to receive is called great tribulation or jacob's trouble um and the master when he was in the flesh he said that this is a time uh that is unparalleled to any time before and after uh, so, you know, we can expect the worst. Um, and so basically it behooves us, the children of Israel and the children, children of Judah, uh, to turn back to our God, to repent, to fast, to seek his face, to humble ourselves before him, uh, to to weep over our transgressions, to confess our sins to our God, to ask him to abundantly pardon, to forgive our iniquities because they're great. Have mercy on us. Because many of our people do not understand that by, by claiming the God of Israel as their God, but not living according to his word, it breaks the Most High's heart. It breaks his heart. And it should break our hearts too. Because when you're, when you're truly saved by the Lord and he gives you his good spirit to guide you in the way, to bring you into the place that he promised, uh, even eternal life, Um, the Most High expects growth. He doesn't expect us to deal with the word on a sometimes basis, you know, because he wants to be close to his people. He wants to be very close in so much that he said in the latter days, uh, when he writes the law in our inward parts and on our minds, that he would walk in us. In other words, we would be so we would be perfectly unified, having a pure mind before him. You know, dealing with his word, living holy, being holy, being righteous, being sanctified through his word. But many, uh, many Israelites, um, especially from the house of Judah. Uh, the southern kingdom, you know, one time, one time recently, my wife, she asked, you know, why did Judah get scattered to the four corners? I said, uh, <laughs> I said, that's a great question. I said, from what I can tell, it's because Judah did worse than Israel, you know, transgression wise. Uh, and, and Judah, you know, the southern kingdom 
we are the same group of Israelites that uh, persecuted Messiah. You know, um, and that that's a scary thing. Even set him up to be put to death. You know, that's a scary thing. Jude, the house of Judah. I mean, we're the ones that the Most High is talking about in Deuteronomy uh, 32. You know, uh, his people who provoked him to jealousy with that which is not God. You know, and he said he would provoke us to jealousy with a people which were not a people, which he was referring to uh, the house of Israel, our brethren. But this people, Judah, the southern kingdom, we are off the chain. We are off the chain. And many of our people do not care that they offend God. They do not care that they hurt the Most High's feelings. They do not care. And it's sad. It's, it's extremely sad. Because all that the Lord went through to save his people, to save us, and for us to turn around like this and just spit in his face and treat his word like it's just some book. And to not take his commandments seriously. To not uh, grow in grace and knowledge. To not walk by faith and not by, and, you know, and we're walking by sight. We, I mean, our people are, you know, ridiculous. Ridiculous. So we're going we're gonna to pick this up in Jeremiah 13. Um, and we're just going to hear from the Most High concerning us. Concerning his, his mind towards us at this moment in time. My, that's what I, I believe. I believe that through, this, through these chapters that we've been reading, I believe that the Most High is talking to uh, Israel and Judah here at this appointed time. This is, this is where we're at. Um, you know, he is gathering the, the north armies against us, which is Japheth's seed. Um, and Japhet is confederate with some other nations uh, that are planning to do us in worldwide. Um, and this is why I'm saying, beloved, that we have to get our houses in order. We have to we have to turn back to our God. We have to stop playing games with this word. Time is short. Time is short. The more you live foul, claiming to be in the word, you, I'm just telling you straight up, you're not going to make it. And that brings neither me as a brother in Christ joy and neither does it bring the most high joy. And that's more important. I'm nothing, but I'm just saying, you know, even when I think about it, as I've read through these chapters already, you know, and I've prayed and I've, I've considered the most high's heart. It brings me no joy neither because I'm saying to myself, why won't why won't our people just turn back to God? Why do they hate your law so much, Father? And all that keeps coming up is they just stiff neck and rebellious. They love sin. They love sin. Israel and Judah loves sin. They love doing the things God said not to do. And they love doing the things that please their carnal mind. You know, and in fact, as I was praying yesterday, uh, you know, I was saying, Father, I said, you know, um, I said, this people, I said, my people are such they are they are such as those who love to do evil, get in trouble, ask you to save them. You save them, and then they go right back into their sins. And it was almost like I could hear the, the Most High saying, yes, you're right. And because I've read his word, because I understand, because I see with my eyes and I hear with my ears. And I'm saying, we... Our people are, you know, we're, I, I've said it before that we are the worst people on earth. 
because we are we God we we are so close to God we're the closest nation to God period ever period ever completely totally the Bible said that you only of all the families of the earth have I known therefore I will punish you for all your iniquities we are so close to God as a people and yet we our people desire to be away from God that is mind-blowing that is mind-blowing So we're going we're gonna to pick this up. Um, Jeremiah 13 and verse 1. Thus saith the Lord unto me, go and get thee a linen girdle, which is like a, um, it's like a little, how can I say? You wrap it around your waist. It's, I don't want to say it's like an apron. It's not that. It's. It's like, it almost looks like a belt, you know, it's in this linen, it's linen and you, you would wrap it around your waist, right? The Lord said, go get thee a linen girdle and put it upon thy loins, so around your waist, and put it not in water. So I'm going to explain this as we go along. He said, don't put the linen girdle in water, right? Verse 2, so I got a girdle according to the, to the word of the Lord and put it on my loins. And the word of the Lord came unto me the second time, saying, Take the girdle that thou hast got, uh, which is upon thy loins, and arise, go to Euphrates, and hide it there in a hole of the rock. So I went and hid it by Euphrates, as the Lord commanded me. And it came to pass after many days that the Lord said unto me, Arise, go to Euphrates, and take the girdle from thence, which I commanded thee to hide there. Then I went to Euphrates and digged and took the girdle from the place where I had hid it. And behold, the girdle was was marred. It was profitable for nothing. So let's continue. Verse eight. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Thus saith the Lord, after this manner will I mar the pride, the pride, the pride of Judah. The pride of Judah. I'm going to mar the pride of Judah and the great pride of Jerusalem. This evil people which refuse to hear my words. Let me let me start that again. This evil people talking about the house of Judah. Us that that are scattered to the four corners. Us Hebrews that went by way of slave ships. This evil people which refuse to hear my words. Which walk in the imagination of their heart. The Lord did say that the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked who can know it this evil people which refuse to hear my words which walk in the imagination of their heart and walk after other gods little g to serve them and to worship them shall even be as this girdle which is good for nothing for as the girdle cleaveth to the loins of a man so have I caused to cleave unto me the whole house of Israel and the whole house of Judah, saith the Lord, that they might be unto me for a people and for a name and for a praise and for a glory, but they would not hear. But don't you know, beloved, that the Most High is going to save his people, Israel and Judah, but the remnant. He is going to save us. And I refer to the true sheep of his, of his good pastor. His, he going to save his true sheep. So let's let's break this down a little bit before we continue. The Lord told Jeremiah, go get a, a linen girdle, put it around your waist. He said, don't put it in water. What does that symbolize? Well, Israel and Judah represent the linen girdle. We represent the linen girdle as a people, as a nation. And the Lord said, put it on your waist. So Jeremiah did. And that and when the Lord said, don't put it in water, that's because we as a as we as the families of israel we refused to be washed by his word to be cleansed to be purified by his word even though he wanted us so close to him basically we're sitting on his lap you understand because he's our heavenly father and we're his children we're his sons and his daughters but we refused to be cleansed by his word 
So he said, don't put the linen girdle in the water. So then the second time the Lord came to Jeremiah, he said, his word, he sent his word. He said, take the girdle that you have, take it off your loins, go to Euphrates and hide it in the hole of the rock. Why Euphrates though? Why the river? He didn't put it in the river, but he put it by the river, right? In the hole of a rock. Why? Because the house of Israel and the house of Judah, we are a stiff necked and rebellious people. And we don't even, we didn't, we despised the good land that the Most High set his eyes upon for our sake, brothers and sisters. Do you, can you understand that? Can you understand that? The Lord picked Jerusalem for us. For us. And our fathers despised the land. They despised it. They wanted to be in somebody else's land. They said we want to be as the families of the heathen. Serving wood and stone. That's what our fathers said, brothers and sisters. And that's what many of our people to this day are, are screaming. We don't want to follow that Bible because it's archaic. We don't want to. Come on, get rid of that stuff. We want to do what we want to do. They want to run back into Egypt. You know, they want to hide in a rock because they want to hide under <laughs> under that. They they want to they want to lay in the bed of iniquity. They want to lay in the bed of rebellion, of witchcraft, of deceit, of stubbornness. Which all symbolizes a rock because rocks don't move. And the Lord is trying to say he's not trying. The Lord is saying to his people, come this way. Follow me. Come on. Come on. And and just like a mule, <laughs> just like a, a donkey, we our people are rebellious. Pulling at the neck. Or like a rebellious child, pulling the shoulder away. You trying to talk to the child. Trying to be peaceful at first. So Jeremiah hit it, right? At Euphrates and then after many days what is now now also what does it mean that he he said put the linen girdle uh, by Euphrates River because we got we went into captivity beyond the river of Euphrates first Israel went into captivity haven't been back to the land Judah went to Babylon came back after 70 years went into uh, Roman captivity worldwide haven't been back to the land yet we still slaves in all the places that the Lord scattered us to. This is why he said, and it came to pass after many days that the Most High said to, now this is, when I say Most High, I'm talking about Christ because the Father is the Most High and Christ is also the Most High too. You could say Yah and Yah, okay? Yah number one and Yah number two, whatever. The point being, Jesus said to Jeremiah, go to Euphrates, get the girdle from where I told you to hide it at. So he went to Euphrates. Now, you need to understand, brothers and sisters, from Jerusalem to Euphrates River is about 250 miles. So that's a long journey. OK, that's over a thousand miles there and back. Well, almost. Depending on the route Jeremiah took. Nevertheless, he got the girdle and it was marred. It was basically destroyed. It was good for nothing. Right. And this and notice what the master said, he said, this is how I'm going to destroy the pride of Judah. I'm going I'm going I'm going to destroy Judah's pride. I'm going to obliterate it. You know how? Through this captivity. Through this captivity. Uh, captivity maketh the wise man mad. The Lord said, I'm going to make you mad by the sight of of your eyes you're going to see things that's going to piss you off while you go in slavery you're going to be mad you're going to be astonished your oppressor the the, the the stranger that's above that's within your gates he's going to get up above you very high and you're going to come down very low you're going to be the tail he's going to be the head you're going to borrow he's going to lend and proverbs king solomon said he that borrows is slave to the lender mm. Mm, oh, how the Lord have destroyed us. 
He have destroyed us, brothers and sisters. Why? Because our people, all that's coming out of their lips is forwardness. Meaning they, they, their heart is inclined or set to do evil. They refuse to be corrected. They refuse. You don't know me. You don't know what I've been through. I mean, just straight up rebellious, man. And for what? So you can run around in all black talking about black everything, black this, black that. Who cares? Who cares? You trying to have black pride, but you need to turn back to these commandments. You need to turn. When I say commandments, I'm including faith in that. You need to turn back to Jesus. You need to turn back to your God, Judah, and start keeping his law, statutes, and commandments. You worried about your oppressor accepting you. You need to be more worried about your God accepting you or rejecting you. Receiving you or casting you away as an unprofitable thing. Notice what he said in verse 10. This evil people talking about us, talking about Judah. Which refuse to hear my words, which walk in the imagination of their heart and walk after other gods, little g, meaning these fallen angels and their children, the Nephilim spirits, going into witchcraft, voodoo, black magic, white magic. To serve them and to worship them shall even be as this girdle, which is good for nothing. And you say you say to yourself, why two thirds of our people got to die off? Because many of our people is good for nothing. Many of them. Why? Is it because they just literally are good for nothing? No, it's because they don't want to do right. They don't want to change. They don't want to live right. And just like the most high killed off two thirds when Moses and them was in the wilderness. And only a remnant went into the promised land. That's how it's going to be at the end. Just watched a video a little earlier. Hebrew sister in a gas station or some some uh, fast food drink, whatever, some carry out. She talking smack on live. These girls come in there, start fighting her. And apparently she got shot. After she gets shot. Now she talking big trash. Prior to the, the incident of her getting shot. As soon as she gets shot, she starts screaming for help. I'll give you another scenario. This, this, um, this European English guy, British guy was talking smack. He was being racist on the train. Some he three Hebrews got up at the, towards the end of the video. One of them punched the dude out, knocked him out, right? Now you may say, okay, well, the, the, the white guy deserved that. I agree, he did deserve that, right? But at the same time, look at how we so easily are moved with emotion towards racist talk. But when we're told, when we're being corrected by our own people, look, we need to turn back to our God and keep these commandments, which is the right thing. That's not racist talk. That's not be, me belittling you, none of that. But you, why are you not moved with emotion concerning that? Why you don't fear God? Why don't register in your head that this life is only for, uh, it's only a vapor. Why haven't you got that through your, your, your skull yet, Israel? What's the problem? You're not moved with emotion concerning that, but somebody get to talking racist talk to you, telling you how black you are and you a nigga. Now you want to get offended. But you're not offended about your sins? You don't care about that? You don't care that you're offending God, that you're hurting his feelings on how foul you living? Yeah, many of our people good for nothing. Many of them. You don't want to live right? You taking up space, man. The Lord said he going to uproot the unrighteous from the earth. He going to uproot you. He said the meek. He going to beautify the meek with salvation. He said he going to plant his, his servants in the earth forever and their seed forever. Our people, you know, 
something else, man. The Lord want us to be, he want us to be close, man. The Lord truly loves us, Israel and Judah. He loves us, man. I mean, his love is almost, I ain't gonna say almost, his love is not comprehensible. It cannot be comprehended how great God's love is towards us, towards his people. But the snippet of insight that he gives to his men servants and maid servants amongst Israel and Judah, it that blows our minds, man. And he, I'm, I'm talking about, he just literally gives us a crumb of understanding, and it's blowing my mind how much God loves us, the house of Israel and the house of Judah, the twelve tribes, so-called black people, so-called Negroes, scattered in all the earth. Many of our people is Gentiles, don't even know. Who they are. I'm talking about Gentiles in the mind. Don't even know who they are. Many of them don't even care. You tell them that they Israel. They'll agree with you. But they, when you tell them we got to keep the commandments. They look at you with a funny face. Some Hebrews I work with. I overhear them. when I, This is when I first started at my job. I overhear them talking about. Yeah you know we the real Jews. You know we the real people. And those people over there. They the fake people. And so I chime in because my ears perk up whenever I hear anybody, you know, talking about the word, talking about Christ, my ears perk up. Right. So I said, I said, oh, that's cool that y'all know that we uh, that we Israel. I said, you, but let me tell you, you know how we ended up here as slaves. I said, you know why we why another people is occupying our land? I said, because our people refuse to keep the commandments of God. And don't you know, they just looked at me. Didn't inquire. Oh, tell us more. You know, what's these commandments you're talking about? Just looked at me like deer in the headlights. Oh, for real? Oh, okay. And I'm saying, yeah, you know, we got to turn back and keep the commandments, man. You got to start, you know, if, if you, you know, slow process, but you got to learn the real Hebrew God. You know, you got to, you got to work this thing out. You got to start keeping his, his, his laws, man. That's why we in trouble. They're just looking at me. And so when I read stuff like this, I'm agreeing with the master. Yeah, Lord, you right. You right. Our people is evil. I mean evil. How God want to be so close to us and we we don't even want him. And God is not drawing that close to other people's brothers and sisters. He's not drawing himself closer to nobody else on earth except us. And we the only ones telling God, no, I don't want you. I'm saying to myself, boy, we are a silly Silly, silly people. But like I said, to begin with, the master going to save his people. <laughs> he going to save the remnant from Israel and Judah because he love us. And his true sheep, we love him back. And we're, we're showing him great gratitude. And we are thankful that he have delivered us from Egypt. We are grateful that he brought us out of uh, Satan's house of darkness and bondage. Jesus said to whom is for, to whoever is forgiven much, they love much. Whoever feels like they've been forgiven for little, they love little. Mm, 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 mm. We causing our daughters to be whores. Look at look at Cardi B and, and Megan the Man Stallion. Boy, oh boy. Teaching all teaching now now here's here's where here's the thing Judah don't like to talk about, right? Concerning Cardi B and, and this whole WAP thing, right? Uh Judah don't want to admit that they got they that they're allowing their daughters to watch that. You got it, you got such a problem with the influence of these satanic celebrities influencing your sons and your daughters but why are you allowing your sons and daughters to be entertained by that garbage in the first place it's one thing to come across that information in passing like oh you know and you hear the uproar oh wow you know look this video is trifling blah 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 but it's another thing when you know the inside scoop you you don't watch the video you don't let your children watch the video why are you doing that judah why are you doing that and then got the nerve to complain about what you're seeing. What do you th do? You think these Hollywood uh, idiots is going to promote righteousness? 
Do you really believe that? Do you think they're going to train? They're going to help you to train up your children in the right way? Come on, they're they Satan pays them for their influence to brainwash the masses, to call that which is evil good and call that which is good evil. That is what Satan is paying these people for. And because the love of money is the root of all evil, they're going to do it. So why be surprised? Why be surprised? But you see Judah's in an uproar. Oh, I can't believe it. And then you got this one uh, silly Hebrew woman. <laughs> Long nails talking about, I just want to thank you, girl, because you, you know, because your video, it liberated me. I'm like, hey, listen to this Negro. Look at, listen to her. So when the Lord say this evil people which refuse to hear my words, you said Cardi B and Megan the Man Stallion liberated you because of this garbage video? This I haven't even heard it. I haven't seen the video. I don't care to. But I've heard so much about it. Already. You... That liberates you? That, that makes you feel free? Free from what? Free from what? Notice, go back to the word, brothers and sisters. Psalms 2. Why do the heathen rage? Why do the people imagine a vain thing? They say, come, let us, let's, let's come together and let us loose the bands. Let us cut, cut asunder the bands. For we don't want to be bound to God. That's how Judah is. That's how Judah's talking. We don't want to be bound by his word, you know. It's, it, you know, it comes to mind. It was a movie Jackie Chan played in. It, uh, it was about, um, he, was, he was part of like the Shanghai dynasty or something like that. And, you know, when, the, when, when one of his kinfolk came with the, with the manuscript or the law of his people and Jackie Chan heard him reading it, he bowed down. He got on his knees and bowed down, you know, head down and everything. And I'm like, see, that's how our people need to be, man. When we hear the word of God being put forth, we need to have that same humility. You know you've been living foul. Put your head down, man. Seek your God and ask him to forgive you and abundantly pardon your transgressions because he's merciful and he don't want none of us to perish. Get on your knees before him. This people, man, we are out of our minds. Crazy. I mean, silly crazy, man. And it is so frustrating. So frustrating. Because our people would rather do evil and evil and evil, disobey God, keep doing evil, talking disobedient, <laughs> so that they can end up in the lake of fire. They going to be standing in that line, going to the lake, crying their eyes out. Talking, trying to plead with Messiah, trying to plead with the saints. These same Negroes that today refuse to hear God's word. You're going to let your sins consume you to the point you're going to go to the lake? If the Lord will in that day, I'm going to ask. All them that's in my line. I'm going to ask them, was it worth it? I said, if the Lord will, I'm going to ask, was it worth it? You know how you lived your life contrary to the word of God? You know how you, you see this record? You see how many times God sent people to you? Was it worth it now? Thinking back on it. You about to spend eternity in here. You understand that? You ain't never coming out once the commandment goes forth. You do realize that, right? It's over. Ain't no, ain't no more grace. Ain't no more mercy. Ain't no, ain't no rewind button. Why didn't you listen when you had the when you had the time? Why didn't you hear God? Why did you turn him off? Why? The Lord said, for as the girdle cleave it to the loins of a man, so have I caused to cleave unto me the whole house of Israel and the whole house of Judah, saith the Lord, that they might be unto me for a people and for a name and for a praise and for a glory. But they would not hear. He's talking about the majority because there is a remnant from Israel and Judah that love God and keep his commandments. 
And we are re good representatives of his holy name. We are his praise in the earth. And we do show forth his, his wonderful glory. We not like <laughs> the lot of Israel and Judah that care not about the words of Almighty God. Who despise his words, who cast his words behind their back. No, we not like them. So to you, brothers and sisters, that truly love the, the, the Godhead and keep their commandments, I say unto you, it shall be well with you. Continue to fight the good fight of faith. Don't quit. Don't let nobody steal your crown. In short time from now, God will crush Satan under our feet. Believe the word. But there's no rest to the wicked. Let's continue. Verse 12. Therefore thou shalt speak unto them this word. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel. Every bottle shall be filled with wine. And they shall say unto thee, Do we not certainly know that every bottle shall be filled with wine? Then shalt thou say unto them, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will fill all the inhabitants of this land, even the kings that sit upon David's throne, and the priests, and the prophets, and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem with drunkenness. With drunkenness. And we know he's talking spiritual. Spiritual drunkenness. You tell your fellow Israelite, you know we Israel, and well nowadays they'll agree with you. Yeah, I know we Israel. But then you start talking about the law, they look at you, man, I ain't trying to hear all that. I'm talking to a brother I work with on a bus one day from from work coming home from work. And they was talking about, you know, World War Three and the end of the world. And I said, Well, look, you want me to tell you how it plays out? And I didn't go all the way in detail. I just told him, I said, look, what you have to do, you got to turn back to God. If you want to be spared from that time, I said, you got to you got to turn back to God and start keeping the commandments. You got to believe in the real Jesus. Start keeping the Sabbath day. Start keeping, you know, the dietary law. You got to start giving up stuff. You got to sacrifice unto your God. As soon as I mentioned the Sabbath, I seen the brother's eyes glaze over. Like, I'm not, I'm t I done turned you off. I'm not listening to you. And I, I, I could feel it in my spirit, like, Woe unto you, man. Woe. Because you think you so bad now. You think you so tough, so gangster. I'm, man, whatever. I ain't trying to hear all that. Okay. When your behind is going to that lake of fire at the end, boy, we're going to see you break like a little girl. We're going to see it. Jesus said it. Many going to say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? We didn't cast out. Look, Lord, we did all. Look, they're going to be trying to run down their resume. Trying to save theyself. But Jesus told you from the beginning, man can't save himself. You can't save yourself. Only I can save you. I'm your savior, Israel. I'm your redeemer. You cannot save yourself. The Lord said he's going to pour on, on the house of Judah drunkenness. Camilla Harris. Let's talk about her. Just like, uh, what's her name? Candace Owens. The Both of these Hebrew sisters married to Europeans. Camilla Harris was bold and she said she's not doing nothing for black people. Do you expect any of these politicians to care about you, Israel and Judah? Why do you look, why do you put your trust in man? Why do you trust in flesh and not your God? Why do you do that? You look to these politicians, these devils, and you think they're going to save you from your situation. And the Lord told you in his good law, man is not going to save you. Nobody going to buy you. Joe Biden going to tell some, he going to tell Israel, you ain't black if you don't vote for me. Pedophile, please. Are you serious? And don't you know it's it's the these house Negroes is rallying behind this man, this pedophile. Mm mm mm. We're gonna see the next chapter that we read. We're gonna see the Most High. His heart is. I'm telling you, brothers and sisters. I was reading it. Uh, while I was at work yesterday, 
just just going over it this you know uh to refresh my my memory the most high is he said he's sad over us man he's he's sad over us man mm 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 wow I mean, just when you take it all in, brothers and sisters, and you think about it, just think about everything, man. Just think about it. This is one of those Selah moments. Just really think about everything that our people are doing that's contrary to the word of God. Just think about it. You got this, this Hebrew brother got locks and he's tatted up all on his face and everything got small children got a wife and every video all he's talking about is guns all he's talking about is establishing businesses nothing about turning back to god and doing the father's will none of that and don't you know judah watches this brother's videos faithfully faithfully man These brothers, I, I saw a video the other day. I don't know how I'm seeing this stuff. I, I, maybe it's the Holy Ghost showing me. Just showing me the sins of, of, of Israel and Judah. Just showing me. So I could warn his people. Don't do this. Don't go that way. Come on, Israel, Judah. Listen to your God. Come on, Israelites. Listen. Turn back to your God, Israelites. Come on, Israelites. Stop playing games. Stop listening to false doctrines. Come on, Israel. Repent. Turn back. Come on. Start being faithful to your God. Come on. Seen a video the other day, these two Hebrew brothers at a house party. It's on it's them two, and it's about five or six girls. Stripper pole in, you know, near the kitchen. And the brother keeps showing a gun on camera. And they smoking weed. The girls, some of the girls laid out on the ground. They got alcohol everywhere, whatever rap music they playing. And I'm saying to myself, look at the foolishness, man. Look at the foolishness. <laughs> and then when the brother gets hemmed up, because the popos is always watching Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, whatever else garbage, uh, you know, website there is that people using for the wrong reasons. When the brother go to get hemmed up for having possession of an illegal firearm, because most likely he ain't certified, most likely. Our people love to do th the wrong thing. They love to do the wrong thing. They don't like to follow rules. This is why even, I'm, I'm going to come back to that. But if the brother get hemmed up, don't you know there's going he going to try to hire a public defender or get a, a lawyer to defend his? How can the lawyer defend your wrongdoing? You on camera showing a gun, brother. What do you think is supposed to happen to you? But then, you know, <laughs> when, 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 <laughs> man, drunkenness, we, our people are drunk, man. And it, it's, it's worse than, than, you know, what I think many of us realize It's worse. Our people are severely drunk severely drunk to the point that <laughs> Israelites will argue to justify wrong they will argue you to death to to justify doing evil I'm not I'm not exaggerating brothers and sisters literally our people will argue you to try to justify or save evil
they so drunk and they they so much hate the rules we read the lord said i'm gonna i'm he said i'm going to mar he said this is how, after this manner how jeremiah found a girdle it was marred good for nothing right the lord said after this manner i'm going pro i'm going to mar the pride of judah and the great pride of jerusalem i'm going to destroy their pride how through slavery and everything that comes with it because your oppressor is going to lay down some rules that you're not going to want to follow, but the rules are not going against the commandments of God. Not all of them. And through those rules that they set up that revolve around God's commandments, the Lord say, I'm going to prove my people based on that. We're going to find out if you really repentant or not, whether you really fear me or not, whether you really love me sincerely or not, or whether you just going, you all talk. You trying to flatter me with your vain words like God is stupid. Can you believe that? Like God don't know all things, the creator of all things. And you're going to come to him with flattering words like he don't know. Our people, <laughs> they refuse to follow simple rules as stop all the way at the stop sign. Oh, let me give you another one. Uh, don't run a red light. When it's yellow, by law, you can actually keep driving. You don't have to slow down just because it's yellow. The yellow is a caution signal letting you know it's a getting ready to turn red. But to, I mean, completely run a red light. Rule breakers. Rule breakers. The Lord gave you the English version of the Bible. Those of us that's in America, North America, gave us the English version of, the, of, the, of his manuscript, right? Of his good word. Our people so much hate rules, they can't even stay confined to the Bible as far as the names. No, his, everything in the Bible is right, brother. Everything's right about the Bible. Yeah, that's our, that's our history book. That's, that's our book. But the names is wrong, though. God got the names wrong. What? Are you serious? Yeah, because, you know, back in the day, our forefathers didn't call him Jesus. And? So what? What's the name in the book, brother? Why you can't be content with that? It's like you got brothers just disobedient, just totally disobedient, dealing with the Bible. Well, you know, before the flood, they was, they was vegetarians and fruit ter fruit fruitarians. We shouldn't eat meat. But the Lord gave you the dietary law and said what clean meat you could eat. If you wanted to eat meat, then he gave the understanding to Apostle Paul and said, if you want to, if you eat meat and your brother don't eat meat, don't shove it in his face that you eat meat and that he don't and vice versa. How you don't understand? How do you not understand that? It's simple. But you got these brothers and sisters running around trying to persuade all Israel. You should be vegetarians because meat is unclean. What? The Lord said, don't add to his word, don't take away. Israelites doing that every single day. I mean, every day. Every day. Every day. They will read you this Bible. Every time they come to the name, to the, to the title, God or Lord, they replace it with some name that they think is, is supposed to be there. And you'll hear them say, this is how you know they got a forward mindset, meaning a mindset that's inclined to disobey God. They desire to disobey the most high. They not fighting against their flesh because they'll start saying things like, well, you know, see the translators, they, they, they didn't do it right. They didn't translate it correctly because it should have been this. How in the world are you going to tell God what should have been or what shouldn't been? How? Stiff necked and rebellious people, man. Who kill the prophets. Stiff necked and rebellious people. Who love to destroy the messengers of almighty God. The Lord said I'm going to give y'all some drunkenness. <laughs> if I say it to you a different way. It would be. The Lord going to send a famine. And then he going to send pestilence. You know the, the famine represents. The, the lack of hearing the truth. Concerning God's word. The spiritual famine. He's going to send a spiritual famine. So you're going to be listening to the word, but you ain't going to be hearing God because God is not in the mix of that. He said there's many false prophets running, but I haven't spoken to these guys. But they're the ones you're going to be listening to.
My true sheep is hidden in caves. My prophets is hidden in caves like Elijah. You're going to have to go find these brothers. They're not out in the public shining. And the pestilence hits you right after the famine because the disease is the false prophets and they false doctrines. Mm. Let's go further. Verse 14. And I will dash them one against another, even the fathers and the sons together, saith the Lord. I will not pity nor spare nor have mercy, but destroy them. Talking about the majority. Because to you who do righteousness, it shall be well with you. The Lord loves you and he desires to save you and he will save you. As long as you be faithful. But the majority that's drunk, they got that old wine <laughs> and they don't want the new wine that God is trying to offer. They don't want to have a renewed spirit. The Lord said, I'm going to destroy them. I'm going to make them destroy each other. Hear ye and give ear. Be not proud. Be not proud. Be not proud. O house of Israel, O house of Judah, be not proud, for the Lord hath spoken. Will you not humble yourself and shut your mouth and fear when he opens his mouth? Give glory to the Lord your God before he calls darkness and before your feet stumble upon the dark mountains and while ye look for light. He turn it into the shadow of death and make it gross darkness. The Lord said, give glory to him before all that darkness hits you. You know how you give God glory? Stop living for yourself, Israel and Judah. Stop living for yourself. Stop, stop living how you want to live and live for your creator. Live for your husband. Live for your maker, your redeemer, your savior, your king. Your God. Break up your fallow ground. Stop sowing seed among thorns, man. But if you will not hear it, my soul shall weep in secret places for your pride. I told you. He's weeping over us, man. He's sad over us. He grieves over us because destruction is coming from the North Countries, brothers. And sisters, destruction from Japheth's seed is coming. They are gathering together as we speak. They are coming. The Lord said, but if you will not hear it, if you're not trying to hear this word, if you're not trying to hear the word of correction, the, the word of rebuke, of admonishment. If you if you refuse to be edified. The Lord said, my soul shall weep in secret places for your pride. I'm, I'm going, I'm going to cry. <laughs> you making me, you making me sad, Israel and Judah. I, I'm going to cry because of your pride, man, because you're, 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 you are willing that you, you're going to allow your pride to destroy you. When all you got to do is humble yourself, be broken before me, but your pride is what's going to kill you. He says, and mine eyes shall weep sore and run down with tears because the Lord's flock is carried away captive. They're going to do Israel and Judah in worldwide. They're going to hurt our people something serious, man. And they're getting all their ducks lined up right now. They moving into strategic places all over the world, waiting for the green light from the Lord. And I'm not saying that they talking to God. I'm saying that God gonna send angels to tell these people, give them the green light. They gonna know when it's time. Why? Because our people are full of pride. Don't wanna hear the truth. Don't wanna hear the truth. Love to tell the what they consider to be the truth to other people. But when it come back on them, when the light starts shining in their life, no, nah, don't, let's don't talk about that. The Lord says, say unto the king and to the queen, humble yourselves, sit down. For your principality shall come down, even the crown of your glory. Your pride is stinking up to heaven. 
God said, I'm, I got to judge this. The cities of the south shall be shut up and none shall open them. Judah shall be carried away captive, all of it. It shall be wholly carried away captive. Talking about the majority. All the evildoers going to be dealt with. From the time starting in Jacob's trouble, it's happening even now, but that's a slow, that's a slow turn. The, a lot of wicked Israelites going to die during Jacob's trouble. Many saints going to die too, okay? But a lot of the wicked is going to die amongst Israel and Judah. And then when we get to, when, when the Lord come back and save us and bring us all to the wilderness, even more wicked Israelites going to die. The Lord said, lift up your eyes and behold them that come from the north. I keep telling you, we, as we've been going through this Jeremiah study, this Bible study, we've been seeing. The Lord keep talking about the north, fam the northern families that's coming against us. They coming. And Judah is not ready. Israel and Judah is not ready. Our people so worried about going to buy a parcel of land and build up a community and live happily ever after till, the, till they die, till the Lord come back. Look, it's not working that way. That's not wisdom. Uh, you know, take, you don't have to listen to me. <laughs> Who am I? But I'm saying that's not wisdom. If you would hear what I'm saying, that's not wisdom. You know why? Because trouble is coming. And the trouble that's coming is not going to discriminate just because you got a piece of land and you've been keeping God's commandments. If you've been living foul secretly, that is. Trouble is coming, brothers and sisters. Why will you why will you harden your heart any longer? Why will you not humble your heart and become broken before your God and turn back to him with weeping and sackcloth? Why not? Why will you destroy yourself, O house of Israel? O house of Judah. Instead of you trying to build up your own communities, instead of you trying to, I'm, I'm talking about, instead of you trying to, let's buy a parcel of land and let's do this and let's get our finances in order and all that. Look, I'm not against that by itself. I'm not against that. I'm saying when you, if, if the Lord has given you eyes to see and ears to hear and you discern trouble is coming, you need to get your house in order first before you try to worry about this exterior stuff. Because that's wisdom. To save your soul instead of worrying about trying to save stuff. A lot of us are not ready, man. A lot of us are not ready. And praise the Most High for giving us grace in this hour to get ourselves ready to overcome, to overcome. Notice he didn't talk about go out and build you some, build you this and build you that before I come. He said to him that overcome. Overcome what? Overcome my temptations. Overcome these sins that's in my life. Overcome the fallen angels. Overcome the wicked spirits. Overcome uh, uh, people that's trying to steer me the wrong way. Overcome Babylon. But so many of our people are not concerned with those things. Rather, they're concerned with the exterior. I need to look good. I need to smell good. I need to have some money in my bank account so I can flash it before people. Tell them how successful I am. The Lord said, lift up your eyes and behold them that come from the north. Notice he said, look up, look, pay attention. Pay attention, Judah. Please pay attention, man. The Lord said, lift up your eyes and behold them that come from the north. Where is the flock that was given thee, thy beautiful flock? What will thou say when he shall punish thee? For thou hast taught them to be captains and is chief over thee. Uh, shall not sorrows take thee as a woman in travail? The Lord said, you have taught your oppressors how to better enslave you. You've taught them. You've given them clues. You've, you, you know, it's like you sitting down strategizing with your enemy on how to better to further your oppression. Well, yeah, you know, if you do this, then we'll stay in, we'll stay uh, obedient to the slavery. We'll, 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 uh, we'll be comfortable. We'll be more comfortable. Yeah, do this and say this. Treat us this way. 
Because we like being slaves. We don't want to be free. We don't want to be free so we can serve our God. No, they when they talk about free, they talk about free even from God. The Lord said, won't, won't sorrows take you as a woman in travail and birth pangs? And if thou if thou say in thine heart, wherefore comest uh, come these things upon me, for the greatness of thine iniquity are thy skirts dis discovered, and thy heels made bare. Can the Ethiopian change his skin or the leopard his spots? Then may ye also do good that are accustomed to do evil. If you set your mind to do evil, then how you how you plan to repent? How you plan to change? Had a cousin that told me, well, look, I know being gay is wrong, but I'm going to get straight right before the Lord come. No, you're not. You're deceiving yourself. That's why I told her. No, you're not. You're deceiving yourself. It's not possible. You, you're going to reap what you sow. The Bible said God is not mocked. You're not going to live a life of sin, and then right before the Lord come, you're going to automatically snap to become righteous. It don't work like that. You're going to die in your sins unless you repent now. Therefore will I scatter them as the stubble that passeth away by the wind of the wilderness. This is thy lot, the portion of thy measures from me, saith the Lord, because thou hast forgotten me and trusted in falsehood. Trusted in falsehood. The names in the Bible not right. <laughs> The Old Testament, the Father is dealing with us. The New Testament, Christ is dealing with us. When Christ told you in the New Testament, you've never heard the Father's voice and you've never seen what he looked like ever. Letting you know the same God you was dealing with in the Old Testament, that's me. And Israel don't, don't believe him. They don't trust him. Nah, he lying. He don't, he don't know what he's talking about. You got non-Messianic Israelites. We reject the whole New Testament. Paul was a false prophet. Jesus is a, is a fairy tale. That's made up. The Lord said, this is your punishment. All that I've, I've just shared with you, this is your punishment from me. You know why? Because you've forgotten me and you trust in falsehood instead of the truth. Instead of the truth. Therefore, will I discover thy skirts upon thy face that thy shame may appear. I have seen thine adulteries and thy names, the lewdness of thy whoredom and thine abominations on the hills in the fields. Woe unto thee, O Jerusalem. Wilt thou not be made clean? When shall it once be? When are you going, when are you going to repent? When are, you, when are you going to desire to be baptized with fire and the Holy Ghost? When are you going to decide that you're going to love your, your God and fear him and give glory unto his holy and wonderful name? I tell you the truth, many of them going to wait until the end when it's too late. They're going to try to plead and ask God to pardon them when it's too late and it ain't going to work. And that's the saddest part of this is that when God is giving you grace to, to, to know him now, Israel and Judah, you're refusing. You, you sealing your own fate, man. You sealing your own destiny up by Walking contrary to your God, man. When all you got to do is humble yourself. Be sanctified by his word, but you want to fit in with the heathen. You want to fit in with your oppressor. You, you like envying your enemies. Your enemy give you commandments. You have no problem doing what he say, but God, your God who saved your life, your, he gave you your very life. He give you good commandments. Man cannot compare. Nobody can compare to how good God is. And you won't even fear God. You won't even give him respect. You won't even honor him. And he the one that gave you life. He made you. He's provided for you every, literally every day of your life. He's given you food, clothing, and shelter every day of your life. And you say, but I've been homeless. I was on the streets. Okay, that's not because God put you there. People have done evil to you, but your God still was there for you. 
you ain't dead. If you allowed to tell the testimony of, hey, I was on the streets, you know, I had it rough. Okay, but God spared you. He still saved your life. And of course, there's other factors that go into that. Maybe there was some sin mixed up in there. Maybe that was chastisement from the Lord because you was doing wrong. Maybe you wasn't doing wrong. Maybe somebody abandoned you. But the Lord was trying to teach you that even though other people may forsake you, I will never forsake you, Israel. I will never leave you. I will never depart from you. Because you're the only family of the earth that I have known. You are my inheritance. You are my sons and my daughters. You are my bride. He said, you may forget me, but I can't forget you. He said, he said, you're, he said, you're engraved on the palms of my hands. Your walls are continually before me. The word of the Lord that came to Jeremiah concerning the, the dearth. Judah mourneth and the gates thereof languish. They are black unto the ground because of famine. And, they, and the cry of Jerusalem has gone up, even as it is this day. Yeah, there's a famine in the land. <laughs> famine of food and water. That's why many Israelites, are, many of us are on food stamps. Yeah, there's a food shortage. You know. Uh, <laughs> but the more important part of the famine is that it's spiritual. You got Israelites running to and fro, trying to hear the word of the Lord, not hearing it. And you, you know what? You know how Satan is using that to his advantage? Because when they realize that the places that they run to and fro, they're not hearing God's voice. They, Satan wears them out like that. And then eventually they give up. They give up the chase. They stop trying to find God and they just be content in their sins. And then they end up dying like that. And they're going to wake up going to the lake of fire, unfortunately. And their nobles have sent their little ones to the waters. <laughs> so if you can imagine that, sending the little children to fetch water, right? Well, <laughs> uh, going, going to some of these synagogues, going to some of these camps, they, when they bring their little ones, they ask their children when they leave. Because they, they don't feel like, oh, I, I don't feel like I heard the Lord there. But let me see what my child said. And they ask their children, well, did you, how did you feel about that? And the child say, oh, you know, the child would tell their parent, oh, I, I loved it. I enjoyed it. But only because they made some friends there, not because they heard the voice of the Most High. So the parent will stay there just for the sake of having their child be friends with another child. And their nobles have sent their little ones to the waters. They came to the pits and found no water. Think about what I just said. They returned with their vessels empty. They were ashamed and confounded and covered their heads because when the parents be asking each other, what'd you learn? Oh, well, well, I learned such and such and such and such. You may learn camp doctrine, but are you hearing the voice of the Most High? Are you actually hearing his words? Is it getting into the depths of your soul, even to the joints and the marrow? Is it causing you to understand, to fear your God? To love him always. To keep his good commandments. The children ain't telling their parents that. They able to recite camp doctrine. And that's it. So they come back ashamed and confounded. Because when they see the other children. Who are not. In these places with no water. Who are full of the spirit. Got understanding of the word. They got joy. They got the fruits of the spirit. All of that right. Know the voice of the most high. The children that's in these places with no water, they are ashamed when they encounter these, their peers. Because the ground is chapped. For there was no rain in the earth. The plowmen were ashamed. They covered their heads. Meaning the evangelists. Yeah, the hind also calved in the field, the women of Israel, and forsook it because there was no grass. The women are starving for marriage. The women of Israel are starving for a husband. Can't find a righteous brother to save their life. You know why? Because these brothers is neighing after another man's wife. These brothers is gay on a down low. And the wild asses, the false prophets, did stand in the high places in these churches. 
They snuffed up the wind like dragons. Their eyes did fail because there was no grass. They looking and saying, oh, where's all the people? COVID-19. Where Fake is a hoax. But nevertheless, where's all the people? Oh, see, this isn't right. Here come this white preacher. Oh, look, you wait. see, you still got to tie to the church. Even though you at home and you ain't in the building, tie to the church. I blow on you, COVID-19. <sighs> Are you retarded? And I don't mean that to, to, to be disrespectful. Are you out of your mind? These false prophets is looking and their eyes is failing because it's no grass. <laughs> they not they not able to uh, swipe the sheep, see, steal from the sheep because the sheep is not in their presence right now. Because they church, they closing these church houses. So now these preachers is mad because they ain't getting that money. Oh, Lord, though our iniquities testify against us, do thou it for thy name's sake, for our backslidings are many. We have sinned against thee. How many of us is actually confessing this, though? How many of our people is actually saying this? Our people running around talking about Black Lives Matter ain't got a word. To, I mean, they ain't got a word to say when we killing our own people. And we've been doing this since the days uh, right after King Solomon died, which is uh, 900, if I'm not mistaken, B.C., We've been killing each other for a very long time. And we don't like to talk about that, but we've been doing it for an extremely long time. But if the enemy oppress us and hurt us and afflict us and kill us, oh, we, we whine and cry about that. But how about using righteous judgment and calling evil, evil all the way across the board, calling righteousness, righteousness all across the board? What about that? Oh, the hope of Israel, the savior thereof in time of trouble. Why shouldest thou be as a stranger in the land and as a wayfaring man that turneth aside to tarry for, for a night? Why shouldest thou be as a man astonied, as a mighty man that cannot save? Yet thou, O oh Lord, art in the midst of us and we are called by thy name. Leave us not. Thus saith the Lord unto this people, thus have they loved to wander. They have not refrained their feet. Therefore, the Lord doth not accept them because they, they, they don't care about the cross. They don't care about the, none of that. All they care about is fulfilling their lust. The pride of the, the, uh, the pride of life, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes. That's all a lot of Israelites care about fulfilling. They're not familiar with uh, with sacrificing unto the most high. They're not familiar with self-denial. They're not familiar with laying prostate before the Most High in the Spirit and praying and confessing sins to Him and asking for Him to save them, asking for His mercy. They're not asking for none of that. They're not asking for the Most High to prune them so that they can bear more fruit, so that they can begin to bear fruit. They're not asking God to save them. Because they don't think they, they their life is that bad. They don't think, well, I don't think that I'm, you know, that I'm in need of a Savior. You are. For more than, than one reason. The Lord said they have loved to wander. They have not refrained their feet, meaning they they not carrying their cross. They don't even they hate the cross. They hate the cross. The Lord said, therefore, the Lord does not accept them. He will now remember their iniquity and visit their sins. So specifically, who's this talking about? He's talking about the 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 corrupt saints. And there be many. Corrupt Israelites dealing with the word, but not dealing with the word at the same time. Will read you a hundred scriptures, but won't obey not one. Talking about how we should love God, but when you judge their fruit, they're not doing it. They don't love him. The Lord said he's going to remember their, their iniquity and visit their sins. They partying it up. <laughs> they drunk off of, off of the pride of being an Israelite. 
They found out they Israel. They can't get past that. They can't get past that. And therefore they testify. They they have they present a bad witness to many because they're drunk off of I'm an Israelite. You, you gotta come up off of that. Look, we we understand we Israel, okay? And that's a beautiful thing. Indeed it is. I know many of us have been brainwashed to believe that, we, you know, we're nobody people and all that. Look, it's great to find out you're an Israelite, but you have to grow from that. You have to grow from that. You cannot stay there. That's not going to save you. That is not going to save you, man. God is not coming back to save. Uh, he's not coming back to save us just because we Israel. He's coming back to save the righteous amongst Israel and Judah. He loved his people, no doubt, all of us. But the Lord is, he got to keep his word. He's going to uproot the wicked from the earth. And he's going to plant the righteous forever and ever. We must turn back to our God, my people. We must fear him and, and, and begin to keep his commandments. We must do this or we're not going to be saved, man. He's going to dump us in the trash bin called the lake of fire. That's the garbage bin, the eternal garbage bin of the most high. We, if you don't want to go there, you got you to gotta listen to the words of the Lord and, and do what he says. Turn back to him with all your heart. Don't play halfway with him, man. Then said the Lord unto me, pray not for this people for their good. But of course, many of our people, we don't like to hear that neither. Well, I'm going to pray for him anyway. The Lord said, don't pray. You're going to be wasting a prayer. I'm not listening to you talking about these people. Talking about the ones that you know, you and I know there be many wicked Israelites, even wicked Israelites dealing with this Bible. We know many of them. And you, you have to eliminate false, you have to eliminate the artificial reality that Satan is trying to put in your, in your face. And what I mean by that is you have to, you have to deny the fake reality of, well, there's still hope for, you know, this person or that person. Because you hear these preachers say, well, they'll quote King Solomon, well, uh, uh, a living dog is better than a dead lion. So they'll use that to say, well, that means that, that, you know, for anybody, there's always hope. No matter what. As long as a person is alive, they got, a, they got a chance with the Lord. That is not true, brothers and sisters. That is far from the truth. And I'll be the first to tell you if nobody ever told you. That is far from the truth. Because if that were the truth, then the Lord would not tell you to fear him and give him glory before he make your way full of darkness. He wouldn't tell you that. If <laughs> it don't matter how you live. And as long as you're alive. You got a chance. That is not the truth. What happened to being. What happened to the Lord giving people over to a reprobated mind. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Apostle Paul said. Because they had pleasure in unrighteousness. They loved pleasures more than God. God gave them a strong delusion. That they should believe a lie. Do that sound like. A person who who lived carefree, lived however they wanted, and because they was alive, they had a chance. Nah. If you fail the grace of God, God will cut you off. He been saying that since day one. Since day one. If <laughs> if any of Israel do X, Y, and Z, I'm gonna cut you off from amongst your people. If the stranger do such and such, I'm gonna cut them off too. The Lord said, don't, he said, pray not for this people for their good. Talk about the wicked amongst Israel. You come across some non-Messianic Israelites who despise the New Testament. Now, there, you may come across one that is following the trend, but they actually, they're not sold on that, right? That's worth fighting for. You fight for that brother or that sister, the one that's unsure about this, whatever they believe in, and you try to win them back to the truth. But if they if they come if they come with argue with that argumentative spirit, that contentious spirit, where they trying to debate you and prove that you're wrong about the truth and that they're right about a lie, no, nah, you don't pray for them. Pray for what? Lord, I pray you turn their heart. I, you know, because Lord, your word, you quoting scriptures out of context. Lord, you said that the, the king's heart is in your hands and you turn it whatever way you want. That's not talking about everybody, brothers and sisters. 
If that's the case, ask the most how to turn the hearts of the Rothschilds. Why you don't never pray about that? If you really believe that people, some people can change. Some people are damned, brothers and sisters. Some people are damned. And they're going to bust hell wide open because that's their choice. The Lord said, don't be wasting prayers on, on <laughs> don't waste prayers. Be wise as serpents, harmless as doves. You need to know who to pray for and what to pray for. People will tell you, because <laughs> people are very secretive, people will tell you, oh, uh, unspoken prayer requests. I, you know, I'm not going to tell you what to pray about. I'm just asking for prayers. Come on. You, you ain't going to find that in the scriptures. People don't, Israel never said, pray for me and don't tell you what to pray for. People will tell you what to pray for. When they ask you, can you pray for me? They'll say, pray for me for this. Pray for me for that. But when you got a whole bunch of secrets, because you, you know, whatever the case is. The Lord said, when they fast, I will not hear their cry. Let's do it. Let's do a seven day fast. Let's do a three day fast. Let's do a two day fast. But you ain't doing nothing the most I say. You're not denying yourself. You're not fighting a good fight of faith. The Lord said, I'm not going to hear their cry. I'm not respecting that. And when they offer burnt offering and an oblation, <laughs> uh, I will not accept them. When they come together for the feast days, getting pissy, drunk, listen, turning up to gangster music in the feast. A brother was just telling me this. I said, I don't put it past Israel. You know, I see I, the Lord, the Lord have given me grace, all praises to the most high. He have given me grace to understand how to see the scriptures for today. And, I, and there's many Israelites I know that don't they don't read the scriptures that way. They read it like it's only talking about that one particular time instead of understanding. God has always talked through the generations. He taught he he's God is not confined. So. The Lord said when they offer burnt offerings and, and, and oblation, I'm not going to accept them. They come together for the feast. They get pissy drunk at the feast. They'll listen to the Bible. Let it go in one ear and out the other. Right? Because it may be some, some recycled lesson. Ain't it's no fresh oil on it, no fresh anointing, right? So the people are not properly fed. They listen to something they already heard instead of going deeper in God's word, getting deeper understanding, trying to trying, you know, instead of the pastors trying to feed God's people with a uh, uh, an alive word, they keep talking about the past. Oh, well, back then. God did X, Y, and Z. Back then, God spoke to his people concerning such as that. Back then, God's people did this, did that. But what about now? And you think something's changed in between? So they'll listen to the word, let it go in one ear and out the other. After the word is done, they get to cranking that garbage, rap music. Our people talking about doing evil, promoting evil, promoting violence, promoting sin. They'll turn that up. The elders won't say nothing until they until they get <laughs> until they get tired enough of hearing the music. But you you should elder respectfully speaking, you should have said something when they first put it on. You should you, don't be afraid. You should say something as soon as they put that garbage on, so that they understand. They get pissy drunk. <laughs> no consideration for the poor amongst our people. They taking they double stacking plates, taking them home. No consideration for the poor amongst our people. Nobody's saying, let's, let's take all this extra food and let's give it to the poor. Whoever got a vehicle or vehicles, let's, let's drive around the neighborhood and give it to the poor. Amongst our people. No, no. <laughs> you come to most of the feast days, that ain't nobody, you know. Not doing it right. And then got the nerve, got the nerve to get indignant. And get mad at the one who God put the understanding in and, told, and he's telling, he or she is telling the people of Israel and Judah, come on, let's do it the way the Bible say. And they, they got a nerve to get on, get upset with that person. No. They telling you, you can't bring nothing to the feast day, except you've been coming to their class for consecutively six months. Is that a law in the Bible? Because if it's not, then that means you in violation because the law say do not add and do not take away.
The Lord said, when they fast, I will not hear their cry. And when they offer burnt offering in an oblation, I will not accept them. But I will consume them by the sword, evil men, and by the famine, not hearing the words of the Most High, and by the pestilence. Because you're not hearing the words of the Most High, you're going to believe lies. You're going to hear false prophets and you're going to believe them. Because anything to uh, quench my thirst, anything to fill my appetite. You know, when people go through a physical famine, oftentimes because they have not prepared to endure that time, they'll end up eating feces, they'll eat human flesh. Oh yeah, people would do unimaginable things in the time of a real famine. But see, when you, when you have sat at the feet of Messiah, when you have got filled with his Holy Spirit, which is this word, when you've been walking in the word, when you've been staying in the light, when these troublesome times uh, come, you're going to be like Elijah the prophet sitting by the brook. Nice plethora of water, fresh water. God going to send a raven to bring you bread and meat. Evening and morning. And when that run out, he going to send you to somebody. He going he gonna, to he gonna send one of his good spirits to persuade somebody to look out for you. Even in the time of trouble. Because you know him and because he knows you. Then said I, ah, Lord God, behold, the prophets say unto them, ye shall not see the sword, neither shall ye have famine, but I will give you assured peace in this place. Ain't these false prophets saying that peace, peace to everybody? Peace, peace, Israel. So, you know, everything is about peace. Everything. Look, it's trouble coming. It's not peace. It's not peace, man. Peace is not upon us right now. <laughs> Trouble is coming. Trouble is here. Then, then the Lord said unto me, the prophets prophesy lies in my name. I sent them not. Neither have I commanded them. Neither spake unto them. They prophesy unto you a false vision and divination and a thing of naught and the deceit of their heart. Therefore, thus saith the Lord concerning the prophets that prophesy in my name, and I sent them not. Yet they say, sword and famine shall not be in this land. By sword and famine shall those prophets be consumed. By evil men and by them preaching false doctrines. It's going to destroy them. It's going to destroy them. And the people to whom they prophesy, you know, because... When, when a church, like I keep telling you, brothers and sisters, and you take it or leave it, you know, if you're offended at the truth, that I don't I don't care, frankly. I love the truth personally. And uh, the Bible says a wise man hears reproof, right? He receives correction. Everybody I understand is not like that, but I strive to be like that. I don't want to be a fool that hardens his neck and goes on to destruction. No, I want to be the one that breaks myself before my God and humbles myself completely to the point my God can teach me his word and I'll be obedient. At first, when I first started my walk, I was unaccustomed to the yoke. But Lord, when you turned me, when you chastised me, I'm ready. I'm ready to follow me wherever you, I'm, I'm ready to follow you wherever you're leading me. Because I trust you. I've been telling you for a while, brothers and sisters, when a church house is big, when it's mega, when there's many people in the church house, there's a few blades of grass there. There's a few drops of water there. So the people are packed trying to get the little bit that's there. But when a church house is very small, there's very few people there. There's a lot of anointing there. There's a lot of holy oil there. The Lord is is there. He said where two or three are gathered. He didn't talk about the multitudes. He said where two or three are gathered. I'm, I'm with them. You know why? Because the remnant love God. The remnant fear him and give him glory and praise him. They live according to his good word. They strive to be holy like he's holy. They striving to be perfect like he's perfect. They're not making excuses. They're not uh, uh, opening the door to Satan and saying, come on, let's fellowship. And then turn around in the nighttime and tell God, come on, let's fellowship like Nicodemus. No, they're not doing that. Therefore, thus said the Lord concerning the prophets that prophesy in my name, and I sent them not. Yet they say sword and famine shall not be in this land. By sword and famine shall those prophets be consumed. Telling you lies. They're going to pay for that. 
God is not mocked. A man going to reap what he has sown. You sow to the to the, the flesh, you're going to reap destruction. You sow to the spirit, you're going to get everlasting life. And the people to whom they prophesy shall be cast out in the streets of Jerusalem because of the famine and the sword. You who love to hear smooth messages amongst Israel and Judah, you're going to get destroyed right along with your false prophet. They don't never tell you nothing that convicts your soul, that makes you uh, consider your ways. You know, makes you uh, uh, think about the dreadful and terrible God that you serve. They just giving you buttery messages every Sabbath. Yeah, they're going to pay. And so are you unless you come out from amongst them, unless you sanctify yourself from them. Because you may not have. Fellowship. The Bible says you cannot have fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but you have to expose it. But we think that's only talking about the Illuminati conspiracies. The Lord said judgment begins at his house. First. And the people to whom they prophesy shall be cast out in the streets of Jerusalem because of the famine and the sword, and they shall have none to bury them them their wives nor their sons nor their daughters for i will pour their wickedness upon them isn't that something isn't that something therefore thou shalt say this word unto them let mine eyes run down with tears night and day and let them not cease for the virgin daughter of my people is broken with a great breach with with a very grievous blow if I go forth into the field, then behold, the slain with the sword. And if I enter into the city, then behold them that are sick with famine. If I go to the country, <laughs> then I'm seeing Israel that's scattered. They lost sheep, don't know who they are, don't know nothing about the word of God. Attending these, uh, these uh, European evangelical uh, Sunday churches, being brainwashed all the way to death, being lied to. Thinking they living like the brother defending the, the uh, rebel flag, right, down in, in the south. Israelite brother don't even know who he is. And he defending the statues of these white oppressors and the, that, you know, what, the flags. The flags is idols anyway. But he defending this, don't even know who he is. This brother is destroyed. But I pray, I pray for, you know, for the, for the Lord's namesake. I pray he sends somebody to that brother. I pray that brother hear about the word of God and consider his ways and come into the truth. Start following Jesus. Deny yourself. Pick up your cross and follow him. I pray for that brother. But that's how it is in the country. But even when you come into the city, the Lord said they, they sick with famine. When you, when you come into the hoods, when you come into the ghettos of Israel, you see that they're sick of the famine. They're destroyed because of the famine, because they're not hearing the truth. The false prophets, the Lord said where the carcasses is, there will you find, that's where the eagles at. Or rather, he said when you see the eagles, that's where the carcasses are. Many false prophets take their pickings from the hoods of Israel. Many false prophets is there. So when you see many false prophets, all you got to do is... Oh, that's where Israel's at. That's where Israel is. And the Lord is so good that he always have a, 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 a counterweight or he balances it out by having his his uh, his messengers there, his righteous servants there also. But they be the few. You see what I'm saying? The false prophets be the, the, the many eagles, <laughs> the many vultures scavenging Israel. But the righteous be there to restore life unto the dry bones. But it's, it's bad whether you go to the country or the city. Yeah, both the prophet and the priest go about into a land that they knew not. This is what we this is what we ought to say, Israel and Judah. This right here, what we about to read 19 and 20 and down to 22. This is what we have to say to our God. If, if we have understanding, if we if we if we have a repentant heart. Hast thou utterly rejected Judah? 
Hath thy soul loathed Zion? Why hast thou smitten us and there is no healing for us? We looked for peace and there is no good and for the time of healing and behold trouble. We acknowledge, O Lord, our wickedness. This is what we need to say, Israel and Judah. We acknowledge, O Lord, our wickedness and the iniquity of our fathers, for we have sinned against thee. Do not abhor us for thy name's sake, not because we Israel, not because we're some great people, Lord God, for your name's sake, don't hate us. I know we've done, Lord, we acknowledge our sins before you. We admit, Lord, we have done very wickedly against you. We have, we have truly forsaken you and, and we repent, Lord God. Please save us. Don't let the oppressor enslave us like this forever, Lord God. Please come back and save your people. Do not abhor us for thy name's sake. Do not disgrace the throne of thy glory. Remember, break not thy covenant with us. Remember the covenant that, that you made with our father Abraham, Lord God, and you gave it to his son Isaac, and you gave it to his son Jacob, Lord God. Remember the covenant for your name's sake, please, and save Israel and Judah, please. Your mercies are great, Father God. We confess that. We know that you sent your word and your word healed us, Lord God. Save the remnant of your pastor, Father. In Jesus' name. Are there any among the vanities of the Gentiles, the heathen, that can cause rain? Or can the heavens give uh, showers? Art not thou he, O Lord our God? Therefore, we will wait upon thee. We will wait upon thee. The Lord said, blessed are those that wait upon me. Therefore, we will wait upon thee, for thou hast made all these things. You've made the heavens, the heavens of, you've made the heaven, the heavens of heavens. You've made the earth and all, the, all things that dwell therein. You've made the sea and everything that's in it. You made all the angelic hosts, Lord God. You made man on earth and you breathed the light, the breath of life into his nostrils and he became a living soul, Lord God. You created the nation of Israel for your good pleasure, Father God. You gave us your good commandments, told us to obey your voice. You even gave us your good spirit to guide us in the way to lead us into everlasting life. We praise your name, Father God. Save us, please. All them that hate you to your face, Lord God, I pray that, that, they, that you, you recompense them, Father, as your word have said. Repay them to their face. Make their tables a trap. As, as King David said, Lord God. Destroy the wicked from before your face. Just as you said in Psalm 37. And you said you was going to let the righteous amongst your people watch. As you destroyed that. As you uprooted the wicked. Uh, uh, the abominable branches. The wicked trees, Father God. Cut them off. But Lord, save us. We acknowledge our sins before you. This is what we need to be praying, Israel and Judah. We need to turn back to our God and stop playing games. Till next time, may the Lord be exalted. May the Lord be magnified. I pray grace, peace, and mercy, and love be multiplied to the 12 tribes of Israel scattered worldwide and the strangers that's with us. Till next time, shalom in Jesus' name.